in the peer review process, we have uh, fairly strong now, we have with Scholar One, which is an electronic uh, database, we were able to track the metrics. Um, I think this year the median time to first decision was about 24 days. Last year was about 23 days. Uh, the median time to uh, acceptance is uh, something like 90 days. Obviously, this is a me you know the median value, but these numbers are gradually coming down for BJCP, which is a good thing. I think we're finding also that some of the uh, guidance that the senior editors have taken from from the editor-in-chief about looking at papers critically and if the paper is submitted and really doesn't fit the scope or is not really uh, something that's going to add to the field, a rational but relatively quick response to the authors of, I'm sorry, this is not going to be accepted by the journal, and a brief sort of reason why, I think that's something helpful for the authors. And it also improves the turnaround time too. So if I were to submit a paper to BJCP and it was clearly outside the field of BJCP, and I get the letter that says, you know, thanks but no thanks, right? A bit like a grant, right? Mm -hmm. Don't even make it through the triage. Right. What's the best thing that I can do then? Do you do you just go to a different journal? Do you Well, I think there's a several things to do. It depends on the reason why it was outside the scope. What what has been the practice of the senior editors as a group is if for example the scope uh, goes beyond human pharmacology, which is the primary realm of scope for the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology, and let's say it can it contains predominantly preclinical animal model data, then what we actually do is when we well we actually define it being outside our scope, we recommend to the author well, you know, you could certainly submit a paper like this, or this paper, to the British Journal of Pharmacology, which is our sister journal, uh, and that journal has the wider scope of taking in animal studies as, well, as, as part of its remit. So that would be one, one thing. Sometimes also, you, I think the author just has to look around and think, carefully look at what the scope of the journal is. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the secrets of getting your work published rapidly and in reasonable journals is thinking about the scope of the journals and also thinking about the quality of the paper and what what priority the journal editors are going to put on the manuscripts that's being proposed going forward. So I think they've got to use a, a number of integrated uh, factors to try to make a good decision as to choosing which journal you send it to. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to send it to one journal and maybe it gets rejected or and with a review and then you turn it on to another one and then another one and then some of the data becomes a little bit outdated. You've got to be careful in your choice, your first three choices of where you're going to send the paper. That's great advice actually.